What's up everybody? So today I'm going to talk about a docu-series that I watched recently about Luna Park and the Ghost Train fire that happened in 1979 in Australia that killed seven people. There is still a lot of controversy over that fire. Now the first article we are going to talk about today is from theguardian.com and it is linked in the description below. Independent Review criticizes ABC's Luna Park Ghost Fire series over Neville Rand claim. Now this article came out in August of 2021. An independent editorial review has criticized the ABC documentary Exposed the Ghost Train Fire for making a historical allegation of the New South Wales Premier Neville Rand. Uh, Rand, who led NSW as Labour Premier for a decade died in 2014 at the age of 87. A group of his former staffers have been criticized have been critical of the ABC documentary by the award-winning journalist Caro M E L D R U M H A N N A. The three-part series examined the fire at Sydney's Luna Park in 1979 that killed six boys and one adult. One aspect of the program about the alleged connections between Rand and organized crime figure Abe Saffron has been criticized by Rand's friends, including the former ABC chairman and managing director David Hill, former NSW premiers Bob Carr and Barry Unsworth, and the former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull as unfair, uncooperative. The ABC appointed the journalist Chris Masters and the academic Rod Tiffen to review the material after questions about the program were asked at Senate estimates. Although there is no detail in the ABC statement, the review has found some fault with that statement. And then the article shows a tweet from ABC Communications in response to questions raised in Senate estimates last night. The ABC wishes to put on public record clarifying information around content exposed, the ghost trade fire related to NSW Premier Neville Rand. The ABC would not comment further on the findings of the review. It contains a critical opinion about one aspect of exposed and historical allegation regarding Neville Rand, which ABC News has responded. The ABC said in a statement ahead of the publication of review likely to be published Monday. Now again, this was two years ago, two and a half years ago. The review also contains a response to the finding from ABC's new division, which is responsible for the editorial content of the series. Reviews are not pass-fail tests for the content, the ABC said. The ABC always looks for content looks for ways content can be better and values of insight of external reviewers. The review concludes the program makers uncover much suspicious evidence around arson being the cause of the fire, expose the incompetence of the police investigation, reporting on the inadequacies of earlier investigations, revealed the way policy making by the NSW government benefits benefited Saffron and the corrupt circle of influence around Saffron. They mounted a compelling case for a new investigation. The review also found the program performed an important public service and its production values were world-class and exemplary. It brings together more than five dozen on-camera interviews and scours through a huge amount of documentary research on official transcripts and reports. This is a depth and breadth of research that very few television series achieve and the result is much fresh, revealing and important material. Since the broadcast, there have been responses by the coroner and by the police who are now offering a reward for information about the fire and widespread calls in Parliament and elsewhere for a new inquiry. The NSW Police Unsolved Homicide Squad set up a strike force, S-E-D-G-E-M-A-N, to investigate the cause and origin of the fire at the direction of the coroner, and NSW police offered a $1 million reward for new information regarding the fire. David Elliott has appealed to anyone with information to come forward. Despite the passage of time, this horrific incident remains embedded in the psyche of people in Sydney, Australia. The ABC has strongly defended Exposed and said again it was proud of the program and the talented, vigilant, and hardworking team of journalists who made it. The ABC's independent com 
Independent Complaints Department has found the series did not breach editorial standards. Now, the documentary is very good, very well made. I found it very interesting. If you haven't seen it yet, I definitely recommend checking it out. The next one we're going to talk about is from Junkie, J-U-N-K-E-E, dot -E com. Again, is linked in the description below. A fun night out marred by corruption, lies, and tragedy. It's been a whole week and I'm still thinking about the ABC's Exposed, the Ghost Train documentary. After more than 40 years, the deep dive investigation has finally revealed the truth around the surrounding a devastating fire at Sydney's Luna Park that was once pinned as a freak accident. They originally stated back in 1979 that it was an electrical box fire. It was a it was a problem with something at the park, not arson, that caused the fire. The spine-tingling ghost train ride was a highlight at Luna Park back in its day. Like the haunted house with tracks, passengers would twist and turn around a dark enclosed maze with ghouls, beasts, and uh, imitation fireplace. Just after 10 p.m. on June 9th, 1979, a father and his two sons, as well as a pack of primary schoolmates, boarded their carriages to embark on the two and a half minute ride as a blaze suddenly erupted and ravaged the ghost train. They never came out the other side. Seven lives were lost that night. The amusement park shut down for three years after the incident. Police investigate Police investigations and coronal inquests blamed the fire on an electrical fault, negligence by the ride operators, and a flicked cigarette butt. But now we know otherwise. The truth is way more damning. Over three episodes, the series uncovers new evidence, unheard tapes, and a number of interviews that su suggest the fire was planned and intentional arson. It makes the timing of the fire lit while patrons were still there instead of when the park had closed for the night. Super unsettling. There, it, 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 and it is. If they wanted to burn down the ride, if the documentary is true, why didn't they just do it when nobody was on it? Why didn't they just set fire to it and not risk and take the lives of seven people? Just And there's the cover-up, a corrupt circle of people protecting the perpetrators that spanned from crooked detectives, bikies, crime rings, and politicians. It went all the way to the top in the NSW. There are many reasons to believe now that it was tied to organized crime, that it was tied to Abe Saffron and was covered up. So those are the articles we're gonna go over today. If you haven't seen the documentary yet, I highly recommend you checking it out. It is a great watch. It opens up a new side to the story that a lot of people may or may not have heard before and links it to organized crime, links it because uh, they wanted the land, but they just, even if they did want the land, it still only burned down the one ride. The whole thing is truly, truly bizarre. The park is still open, according to these articles to this day. So if you're in Sydney, Australia, you can go to the park and see where it all ha happened for yourself. Let me know what you think. Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day, and I will see you again soon.